huge chest and shoulders. He was huge. You could shoot him unless you killed him. It wasn't going to stop him from coming because he didn't feel the pain from it. He felt no pain. He was howling out there before he came into the yard and killed those three guard dogs. But they were all guard dogs, trained guard dogs. But he shredded those dogs up into pieces. His hands and his teeth. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. He bit the throat out of two of them. And then ripped the legs off of the, the legs and twisted the head almost off of the third one. And he walked through those three guard dogs like they were paper. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Adventure Guide. And today's episode is going to make non-believers just a little bit disturbed by what they hear because today's story is a true story reported not only in the newspapers, but verified by the Orange County Sheriff's Department. We're going to compare and contrast what was written in the newspaper with the testimony of Bob Bussinger himself as he joins us today here on The Adventure Guide. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and if you really want to help the channel, be sure to let the commercials play to the end without clicking the skip button or link on the commercial itself. Believe it or not, this helps the YouTube channels tremendously. All right, guys, let's get into this. A local newspaper reported in June of 1978 that on Monday, June 19th, 20-year-old Bobby Bussinger and his 18-year-old wife Becky were victims of what the newspaper states as, quote, an elusive figure roams the night, clawing at the window screens, howling, and yelping like a wounded dog. The headlines read, Killer Creature Stalks Viter Area, and the residents near there were calling it a werewolf. Bobby grew tired of the commotion outside, grabbed a shotgun, and went out to confront the shaggy humanoid. According to the paper, he walked to the back of his property, to the fence line, and there on the other side was something standing. Bobby brandished the shotgun according to the paper, quote, the erect form described to be taller than six feet with long, shaggy hair and a muscular body did not scare. It came toward him. He shot in panic as he turned and ran back towards his house. He barely made it, end quote. The paper claimed the Bussingers knew the previous tenants had left because of strange occurrences during the night. Still, they moved into the 28-year-old home located on 3925 North Tam Road in Viter, Texas, as mentioned in the newspaper. Bobby ran inside the home and called the sheriff's office. Help was immediately dispatched. Deputy Jack Reeves arrived on the scene. The couple told him the night before on June 18th, they had heard a ruckus outside like a, quote, good-sized dogfight. The paper also reported that this was accompanied by banging on the walls, rapping on the windows, and heavy-sounding footsteps. According to the newspaper, this thing had killed three of their half-mixed puppies. Two of the puppies' hindquarters were maimed, which caused them to die. The puppies were three out of eight dogs on the property. Deputy Reeves investigated the windows on the side of the home. Four screens were ripped off and the frames broken. These were not modern fabric screens. These were the metal mesh screens. Not only that, but they had tear marks through them that looked like they were done by fingers. There was a path at the back of the property that led into the forest behind the Bussinger's home. The paper stated that Mrs. Bussinger would venture into the forest and follow the footpath to collect berries. At the end of it was a makeshift shelter, a lean-to made of scrap lumber and three pieces of timber. On that Monday night, when Deputy Reeves was called out, he ventured to the fence line, and from the woods he could hear, quote, growling and howling in the distance. It sounded like a cross between the noise a hyena makes and that of an injured dog. As I went into the woods, the sound came from further away as if it was backing off, end quote. Reeves and Bussinger decided to team up to catch the prowler. Deputy Reeves drove a block away and parked his car. Bussinger was to call immediately at the first sign of the intruder. Reeves parked his car, and within five minutes, a call came in that it was back at the house. Reeves floored his patrol car, but the thing retreated as he pulled into the driveway. 
It stopped, and it watched Reeves. Quote, I saw it about 50 yards off, a large form in the shadows. It was between two small oaks that formed a V. I shined the spotlight, and it moved into the woods. End quote. That was the last straw for the Bussingers, who packed their belongings and fled to Becky's father's house in Beaumont, Texas for the night. Bobby vowed not to return to the home till the beast was caught. The story died down and Reeves stated that they actually had a suspect in mind, a man who had escaped from a mental institution at the Rusk State Hospital. However, the story went cold and no answers were reported. Until today. I contacted both Bob Bussinger and Jack Reeves. I will let you compare and contrast the newspapers reporting on the event with the actual testimony of those involved. In this following interview, Bob Bussinger breaks his silence 45 years after the event. Let's hear what he has to say. One night, it was probably 11.30 or 12. Uh, Becky and I were asleep, and somebody started beating on the side of our house. Didn't know where it was. So I grabbed a shotgun, went outside, and there was this great big huge, what I thought was was a man, because I was still half asleep, and but he was hitting the house so hard, he was rattling the dishes in the cabinet. And all he was using was his fist. I fired a shot. He ran off into the woods. And we called the sheriff. He came out. They did a little walkthrough. The sheriff asked me if I fired a, a firearm. I said, yeah, I did in the air, but I didn't fire it at him. If he comes back, I'm going to fire at him. And he said, you can't do that. Well, you don't have that crap works. You can't shoot at people. So the next night about the same time he started beating on the house again. We got back up. I went to go outside and this time he wasn't scared of the shotgun. But he, he'd run back and forth to the woods. We had woods right behind our house that was still part of my property. And when I'd come out, he'd run out to the woods. And when I'd go back in and he'd see the lights go off, he'd come back and beat on the house again. We called the sheriff again. And they showed up with like six police cars. And they ran around the looking, seeing what they could find. But none of the officers would go in the woods after him because I told him where he went. He went to the woods. And so they they didn't go after, after him, but they just made a police presence the rest of the night, off and on. The third day, the sheriff came to me and said, we know who this guy is. And he was a, I don't remember his height exactly, it was between 6'2 and 6'4. But he was a bodybuilder and quite strong. Well, he had taken some drugs and he and it had fried him, his brain. And he was in the insane asylum in Boma. And he had beat up three guards and walked out of the facility. The reason he came to where my house was, was he was raised as a child in that house. It was his grandparents' house. And he was just going home, and there was people in it that he didn't know, and he was just trying to run the south. But he was considered extremely dangerous, because he could not feel pain. If you broke his arm, it wasn't going to slow him down, because he's not going to feel it. You could shoot him, unless you killed him, it wasn't going to stop him from coming, because he didn't feel the pain from it. He felt no pain. So I had a friend of mine that lived in Beaumont who had a guard dog agency. 
And he said, how about if I bring three dogs out there tonight? And that'll keep him from coming up to the house and may chase him off. I said, hey, that'd be great. So he brought three really bad dogs. <laughs> and, he, and he turned them loose and he says, now don't go outside the rest of the night till I come back in the morning to collect them. Because I don't want you bit. I said, okay. Well, that night, he here he comes again. And he walked through those three guard dogs like they were paper. He killed all three of them in just a matter of a few minutes. And then came back to the house. And he was really upset because he beat some of the siding off the house with his fist. Well, I went outside and, and shot some more. And he ran back to the woods. And that night we had two reporters there from Beaumont because they wanted to cover it live if it if he showed up. Well, they got their money's worth from that. And the sheriff come back out. And, and it was just a, a big cluster. And that kept happening for a little over a week. And then all of a sudden it just stopped. Well... They picked him up on the way to Port Arthur, walking down the center of the highway. He was bloody and and dirty, and he had real long hair and a full beard. And uh, a police car drove up to him and asked if they could help him, because they already knew who he was. And he thought at that time he was Jesus Christ, and he said, "I'm Jesus Christ," and I'm here on my mission to save sinners and the officer really nicely said I know where a bunch of them are that you could save if you want to come with us I'll take you to them and he took the man back to the asylum and put him back in they didn't press charges on the man because he was already criminally insane and you can't press charges on a man that can't be held responsible for his actions. And that's the whole story. That's uh, actually better than the werewolf one. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just run with that. The police, the sheriff would not release that he was an escaped inmate from an institution. Ah. They were never given that information, and I was forbidden at the time to say anything except for what the police told me to say. Now, uh, was he yelping and howling and stuff like that as well? He he was howling every single night. Just like a wolf. He was howling the night he, the first night he started, the second night. He was howling out there before he came into the yard and killed those three guard dogs. He howled every night. So there wasn't eight dogs. There was just three? There was three dogs. Okay. But they, but they were all guard dogs, trained guard dogs. Yeah, the, the paper reported that there were puppies there that were half-breeds. No. Boy, they re... Like, <laughs> Sorry? They, they had a lot of leeway on what they reported. When, they, when they, I read all that in the paper, I went... None of this is true. But what do you, you can't change what the paper, you, you know, he was there when it happened. I don't know how he got to eight. Maybe because the dogs were torn up, it looked like eight dogs there. I don't know. But he shredded those dogs up into pieces. Did he use a weapon or did he just use his hands? His hands and his teeth. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. He bit the throat out of two of them and then ripped the legs off of the, the legs and twisted the head almost off of the third one. Wow. This this is as much of a shocker as if you'd have told me a werewolf had done this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the whole... I figure after 40 plus years, I can tell the truth. You know? Yeah. I don't have to stick to the police story anymore after 40 years. 
Now, did he ever try to talk to you? All he did was beat on the house, howl, growl, and and try to terrify us. That's all he ever did. He was never verbal at all. That's an amazing story. That's the whole truth. Of it. That's why I said, told you when you text me, the sheriff said he was a homeless guy. If he's institutionalized, you're not homeless. Well, yeah, he yeah he didn't actually say homeless. He said living in the woods. I, I took that as homeless. He lived in the woods for a little over a week behind my house, but normally he was in an insane asylum until he decided he wanted to leave and he beat up three guards and walked out. How close did you ever get to him? About 15 feet. Oh, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. And, and you know what saved me? The three guard dogs. How wild were his eyes? Uh, did he have that real wild look or anything? Or It's midnight. I, oh. never, I never did see, see him in the light to tell you what his eyes looked like. I knew he, was, he had long hair and a full beard, and he was huge. Huge arms, huge chest and shoulders. He was huge. It, was he Caucasian? Yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, was he wearing clothes or? He, he was wearing clothes, but they were torn. Okay. I'm just trying to get a mental picture of this guy. They were really torn after the dog incident. Yeah. <laughs> all three of them jumped on him. Oh, sorry. Did Becky's father own that that uh, house? Yes. Okay. And then why did the tenants leave before you? I think that was his grandparents that sold it to Chester. Okay. Because the paper reported that couple that lived in it before you had fled because of problems. I, I'm not aware of any of those problems. Okay. So anything I tell you about that would be a lie. I I have no knowledge of it. Well, Bob, this was uh, very enlightening, and uh, I, I can't thank you enough for this information. Do you mind if I call you back if I have any other questions? No, I don't mind at all. Uh, like I said, in a way, it's kind of a, a boring story when you compare it to a werewolf story? No, no. <laughs> no, th this is uh, this is absolutely real, and to me that makes it even more terrifying, you know? But, like I said, they picked him up going to Port Arthur. He was Jesus Christ at that time, and he willingly got in the car, and they drove him back to the institution. No problems, no hassles, no, no one got hurt. And, but I had to replace a, a little bit of siding on the side of the house after that ordeal because he'd actually beat it off the house. Oh, well, again, I, I thank you, Bob, and uh, I will get in touch with you if I, I get any more questions. Thank you so much. You're, you're more than welcome. I did have a couple of follow-up questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, what breed of dogs uh, were they? Uh, two German Shepherds and a Doberman. Which one? Did he rip off the legs of two of them? or? No, just one of them. Oh, just Doberman. one of them. The Doberman. Okay. You said that there were some news reporters that came out there? Yeah, they were there that night, but I don't remember their names. And you said they got more than they bargained for. Do you remember what happened to them? Or They were there when the dogs were being killed. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, they, they, they were looking out the window when it happened. They saw the whole thing. Do you know, uh, were they from a newspaper or from a, a channel? Channel. And were they from Beaumont? or? Yeah, okay. Beaumont. Now, did they report that on the, the news or no? I I know it was in the paper, but I'm not sure if it was ever on, on the TV. I think it was on the TV at one time because they, they were warning people 
not to show up there because we were getting a lot of drunks that were armed. They just wanted to go out there and kill a werewolf. Did any of your neighbors, did you ever hear them speaking of a werewolf? A couple on each side of me, on, they're on Tram Road that weren't scared to death. They didn't come out after dark either. But we didn't. nobody really talked about it because everybody was just mortified that it was happening. Right. Did uh, he mess with any of the neighbors or just you? Just us, because okay. it was, I, I think the way the sheriff put it was, he lived there in that house with his grandparents when he was young. And when he broke out of the uh, mental institution, he was just going home. And his grandparents weren't there, we were. And uh, apparently it pissed him off because he wanted us gone so he could go back home. He was uh, from Rusk State Hospital, but I can't find right. his name. I, I never, I was never told his name. I can't, I can't help you with that. Yeah. But, you know, everybody said Chester had pro- problems with renters and strange things happening with the house, and none of that was true. You know, nobody ever had a, a problem there until that night. You know that it started. Was that story about Becky walking into the woods and no, finding? That was never true either. Uh, and the lean-to was never found. That w- was reported in some cases. There was a lean-to back there that he was staying under. That was never found because it didn't exist. They said it would have taken at least six men, and uh... I don't think six men would have took him. You said that he took out three orderlies, right? Leaving the hospital? Yeah. He did. He beat them up or he, he injured them or he did something that they didn't stop him. They couldn't stop him from leaving. And it, it was, he had a hours and hours head start before he anybody reported him missing. So... That guy must have gotten back out of uh, Rusk, and he went into the correctional facilities. Like he ended up over in uh, in a prison somewhere, because Jack said he ran across him again, and the guy still refused to admit that you know he had done it. The way the sheriff talked to me about it, when he told me who he was, and he when he talked to me again when they picked him up, was said that. He told me that this man will never leave the institution. He will be institutionalized the rest of his life. In my whole life. I'm 65 now. And in 65 years of life, I've never seen anyone else be able to beat life sighting off a house with their fists. Man, that's... but he was hitting the house so hard, he was rattling the dishes in my cabinets. Now, uh, did he rip screens off your windows, or? Oh yeah. Okay. But he never broke any glass to try to get in. So weird. <laughs> well, I think after the first night, and he heard that shotgun blast, I figured some part of him knew if he stuck his head through that window I was going to blow his head off because yeah. that's what I intended to do well I thank you uh, Bob for the follow up questions no problem alright well you have a good day sir you too bye bye so if you want to go on a mini adventure of your own travel on out to Viter Texas and then head up to North 3925 Tram Road and view the residents from the road. However, do not enter their property or disturb them. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and until next time, we're off on another adventure. God bless.